Boom! It's mind pump time. All right, today's giveaway is the No BS Six Pack Formula. I wrote this program years ago. Very effective at building the muscles of the abs so that they're visible at higher body fat percentages. You'll get a six pack and you won't have to get as lean because your abs will stick out because you built them. That's what that program's all about. Here's how you win. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode on YouTube. Help us with the YouTube algorithm. Leave a good comment. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on your notifications. If we pick your comment, we'll let you know and you'll win free access to the No BS six pack formula. Also, all month long, we're running a sale. Maps hit and the No BS six pack formula, both 50% off. You can sign up for them at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code July special with no space for the discount. By the way, if you sign up for the No BS six pack formula, you'll get a coupon code emailed to you so you can buy an ab wheel at 50% off the normal price. So again, it's awesome. All right, enjoy this podcast. This is how I wanted to open this anyways and share a story about you and my first impression of meeting you. So I don't even remember how we originally got connected and how- I do. You do. So, yes. So tell me how we originally got connected before. Now, are we on already or no? Yeah, fuck oh, yeah. Okay. We're going. Okay, so we met originally because I believe I had a book out at the time that uh, uh, Gen some Jennifer Butiani called- was was helping me with press with that book or something and she called you okay and not you or like mind pump i didn't even know who you guys were at the yeah. time and i think you guys that's how it happened and like i needed to have like some like fitness pr to help push this book okay. right and that's how she called and i think you were kind of not when i say you i mean the mind pump media as right, a right, whole right right you 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 mostly probably you justin now <laughs> that i saw that whole bold in the statement that <laughs> she's still holding on i am that. holding on <laughs> i am holding on it was a compliment but, i know you know it's but, funny how people Perceived I that, know, right? but the way you're like boldness. What's you know, like why you said it was so like you're like, you're like insulted by the way I, I used that word. In the top. Completely inaccurate. I know, I know, but still, I'm gonna prove you wrong today. But so, anyway, all right. win me over, Jen. <laughs> I'm gonna try. Yeah, you gotta, just you like we were talking. To go. uh, same as the what we we're just mentioning about you know what. Um. So anyway, so she contacted you guys. I think you guys were kind of on the fence because you didn't know who I, you yeah, didn't that's know anything exactly, about me. Okay. So that's exactly where I remember it. Right. So I don't, I don't remember who did what. And I just remember it came across my desk at one point. I briefly kind of looked at the book and I'm like, who's this girl? And I, you must've had somebody really good on your team doing this because to be completely honest, at first glance, it wouldn't be enough to have me invite you on the show. We hardly have anybody on the show as it is. Yeah. So yes. normally I'm looking for something very specific with that. Ah, hell, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's meet her and let's see. At least meet, we don't have to air it if we don't like her. We won't right. air it, right? So, That's what I do all yeah. the time. <laughs> so, it's, so that was the attitude. It's like, ah, oh, fuck it, whatever. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll see. And we, we end up, of course, loving you and having a great conversation. But what I wanted to share with the audience that I thought was just so, uh, so amazing and what I think has been so fun to watch is, I mean, we have this podcast. We meet for the first time. It's dynamic. We have a great conversation. We learn a lot about each other for the first time. Then afterwards, you and I sit and talk business for probably an hour, maybe more afterwards. And I remember you looking at me going like, um, I'm going to go start a podcast. Yeah. I'm going to go start a podcast. And you were like throwing ideas at me. And I think I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to do that. And I'm like, who is this girl right now? And you chick. immediately I'm went like, after it. And yeah. I'm like, this chick is crazy. And then like maybe two weeks later, you called me and said, okay, I'm doing it. Uh, I have a couple names. What do you think of this? Or what do you think of that? And like, you, I was like, okay, I like that. I, that's, I think it's a good idea. Still wondering, is this girl really going to follow through and do this? And sure as shit, I mean, it's not even months later, I see big interviews popping up with you and stuff. I'm like, where the fuck did she come from? Oh my I'm God. Every time we're like, how did she get these <laughs> guests? Like she just started her podcast. This yeah, is insane. So impressed. And of course I should know better because I got a chance to meet you and that you, you very much so are like that, right? Just, uh, and I, 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 I value that, that characteristic a lot, the ability to, uh, befriend people, be a chameleon in any sort of a room or environment, um, very likable. Uh, uh, you are very blunt and forward, which I love radical honesty. Like that's a big a core value of ours. So um, instantly hit it off. I've been so impressed to watch your journey into the podcasting space and to watch you crush something you pretty much just learned how to do pretty much. Right. So I would love to talk about just entrepreneurship in general and and what it's like building building the the empire that you're building right now. Wow, what a beautiful introduction. Wow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fly out here all the time because it's going to be the way it is. Do you guys want an extra? Do you need a girl as part of this Hey, group? maybe, maybe. Oh my gosh, wow. Uh, yeah. Well, that's a loaded question. First of all, I'd like to say that 
being underestimated is a really great thing sometimes because it will, you could either use that as fuel for yourself or as an excuse. And I just choose to use that as fuel. It's always fueled me um, as either pain has uh, can fuel you, uh, that type of underestimating. And so I've never, ever let that do anything beyond that. And so if I put something out there, then I feel I'm accountable, right? So if I say to you, okay, I'm going to do this podcast, for example, or whatever it is, I feel like, oh shit, it's out there. I'm going to have to now make it happen, right? Because yeah. then I want to I want to be true to my core belief also, which is like authenticity, honesty, being true to myself. And so it helps me actually persevere. So I was actually, when I remember having that conversation with you, and I actually remember on the podcast throwing out like some stupid names, yep. like should it be like Genspiration or Fitspiration yep. and like all these like wonky, wacky things. <laughs> and I, I remember it was not that I was like strategic, but I remember before I even started talking about it, that in my brain, I'm like, I am going to bring it up because that will enforce and make me persevere and go through with it that much more if it's out there. So it's funny that you actually remember that. And Of course. You know. so, so talk about the skills and, and habits and behaviors needed to, because it's, first off, it's intimidating to start from scratch and then say, I'm going to go talk to, like you said earlier, George Clooney or a celebrity or somebody that, you know, how am I going to get this person on my show? I don't have, I've just started my show. I don't have tons of downloads. Who am I? Like, but that never stops you. Uh, and that seems to be the story of your life. What are the skills that you, you need to develop in order to, to do that, to go and just make that shit happen? Because it's pretty crazy. Well, I think it's interesting because you guys, we were just saying this before we actually maybe started to roll, is that, you know, if you come from the fitness business, right, people like tend to like compartmentalize that, um, that if you are good in one area, then that means you have to stay in that. You can't be a fitness person, but also be a good business person mm. or be a good strategist or have multiple things that you can be good at, right? Um, which could then be like a chameleon. So I think, um, first of all, that's always been like the story. I was not never a fitness person. I did all other things, and that's just one of the things that I've done. But to, to really be more specific to what you were saying, or to what you're asking me is how, what's the skills? The skill is the skill of practice, really, and action. I think that's like at the end of the day what it is, right? Like I don't think that there really is a skill. It's just learning how to do something and then not, and I, I guess like getting past the the fear barrier or like the I don't know barrier because what you do is like you figure out what you want to do and then what you what you need to learn to be able to do it and then you just act, right? And you, start, you just act as if and you just do it. So I feel like over time, I've never really maybe been good at anything until I decided I wanted to do it. And then I just kind of, you know, just went into it. I didn't like think as much as I it leaped. I, I leaped before I thought, so, so to speak. So what is that? What is, what is the, the conversation in your head sound like? Like when you, when you, you know, you, oh, just, you don't want to know. I do want to know. <laughs> I am. I'm very curious to what that, I, cause I mean, I have my own probably mantras and chants. I say to myself, I too love to be the underdog. And so what, when you say, okay, I'm going to throw this out there. I'm going to put it out in the ether. I know my personality. I'm going to commit to it, but oh fuck, where do I go from here? Or what, what's the, what's the conversation going on in the head when you're, when you're about to, you know, pursue something that you don't know a lot about yet? I, I think what I, I like to do is find people around me that are really good at what, what I don't know. So I like to surround myself with people. I like to be the most stupid person around or the most, uh, or the most curious, I get, or a very curious person, and really kind of like target laser focus on people who are really good at what I want to do, and like glean from them. So I think that's been one of the things I do. I, I I've done very well, and that's if that would be my superpower. It's not so much that I'm so like I said that I'm so good at something, but I'm good at lasering in on somebody who is really good at that, and then gleaning that information or, or learning from them. And kind of using it as a building block. I think that's number one. And like, you know, like what, what goes around, go in my, like in my head, I think like, what's the worst that can happen? So if I fail, so I try again. Like, you know, the reality is like, no, out there, like you're always a harder critic. Like you're harder on yourself than anybody else. No one really gives a fuck at the end of the day, right? They're so preoccupied with themselves. We think that others care 
but they really don't. They're too. They're, they're, they're way too preoccupied with themselves. So at the end of the day, if I fail, okay, so I'll get up and try again. Like, you know, I talk a lot about making 10 attempts in life, right? Like in, in my whole f- philosophy is that if you, if you have the mindset of, okay, I don't, I don't plan or I don't, I don't expect to win the first time, but I, I'll give myself these 10 attempts. More often than not, you'll either get one of those, you'll either get the goal or another opportunity will present itself that you never even knew existed. So a lot of times what my actual goal is or was, uh, I never actually ended up getting it, but a whole other door opened that I didn't even know even was there that took me down a whole other path that would like that, that helped me elevate to something else. So like everything else, they're like, everything is like, like building blocks, like this long strand. Yeah. And um, that's really what it is more than anything. In my early 20s, I read a book that uh, said that the the yeah, average millionaire failed nine times before they were successful. So similar, uh, when I read that, I then began obs- being obsessed about getting to my 10 failures. Right, there. So, I had, so you saying that like totally resonates with me because- I remember reading that and being like, well, shit, if the if that's what these millionaire billionaires have failed that many times, I'm a young 20 year old. I've only failed once. I need to hurry up and get my 10 under my belt so I can be successful. So I think one that's one strategy I think is so important. You, you, you went over something really quick, too, and that is making peace with the worst outcome. Like knowing that, hey, I'm about to get into something I have no clue about. That's okay. I'm going to attach myself to people that are doing a great job at it. And what's the worst that's going to happen? What? I fail. I lose a couple bucks. I I burn a couple days. Like whatever. I can, I can, if you make peace with the worst outcome, it's much easier to step in the fire. It's also, it's also, you said something about, you you know, that you'll either get to your goal or some other door is going to open. It's like, Knowing that you don't know all the potentials that are going to happen and being okay with that, knowing that the potentials are going to be great at the end of it. Do you have an example of a time that happened to you where you just tried, 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 and then it turned into something else? And Everything like, this is in cool. my life. <laughs> and I will say also, just to add to that, I'll t- there is a million examples, but another thing I was going to say is I think you know one of my big fears in life actually is um, not living my life and not self-actualizing to what I think I can be. So that's more of a fear than the rejection of, mm. a, of, of not getting something. So I, I'll put myself out there over and over again for rejection if that means that at least I made that attempt, at least I made that try so I won't look back in, in regret. Because I think rejection is always better than regret mm. in life, right? Mm-hmm. Like to me anyway, everyone has their own thing or their own uh, path. But for me, that regret is like gut wrenching. When did you get over? Because that is actually not common at all. Um, it's even less common in in females. Is yeah, because be, guys are used to being rejected yeah, by women. All yeah, time. we are. No, it's a true stat. Oh, yeah. Is yeah, it? Okay. yeah, it's actually a true stat guys, that yeah, it's that, reps. that that <laughs> men are used to being <laughs> turned down, it. told no, and so we tend to be a little more resilient with that. It's a less common trait in women. Do you do you remember when you were younger, like when you started to piece that together, like that? Yeah, who cares if they tell me no? Who cares if they don't like? I don't give a shit. Like, when did you when did you start to put that together? I think because maybe I got so like rejected so many times in like certain like certain things in my life that it became like maybe I it I kind of had that same quality that the guys had. Not like not even so much in like relationships or like boys or whatever, but just in like things I would try. Like I don't think I was a I was a terrible student, so that really didn't like pan out for me well. You know, I tried to get into this like dance company that I all my friends got into and I was the only one rejected. <laughs> you know, I mean, I can name so that's what I'm saying. I can name a million things. But the at, so I think I became so comfortable with it yeah. because like it wasn't a practice that I wanted to be, become comfortable <laughs> with. But it, it just happened yeah. that I it, it started to like bounce off. Like it became like that's why, you know, in the in the boldness TED talk that I talk about, <laughs> I say like people should practice talk. this like idea of rejection or asking for what they want because if you practice on these little things, it compounds over time where it becomes like second nature where it doesn't affect you as much. It, like, it, your brain doesn't process it as the same type of rejection as it would have processed it the first or second or third or hundredth time. Yeah, right? that, that makes a lot of sense. And I like what you said about rejection versus uh, regret. I feel like regret is... 
la- lasts a long time. And oh my gosh, I could have done that. And instead of like, well, regret is unknown. Like rejection. Like you know. oh, I, didn't exactly. have to, I, I sucked at that. I tried. Exactly. I know now. It didn't work. <laughs> one one other thing about exactly. you is that you're really good at fostering uh, relationships with people. I noticed this about you just with how you are with me and with us. But even when I went down to visit you and do your podcast. I could see how you talk to the people around you and the people you work with. And then we were talking about, and I'm not going to call out any names, fellow podcasters who (laughs) you've worked with and that you've provided help to, and then they don't return the favor. And you're like, this terrible relationship building, this person is a terrible business person. We had this whole conversation. Hmm. Like how important is building those relationships around you to success? And what does that look like? Well, I think they're very important. I think that it's about, First of all, it's very nice of you to say, so thank you. Um, I think I'm just, I think that I build relationships well. And I think, again, anyone can do that by, I think, being genuinely curious about other people or other things in life and, and being interested, right? I think the worst thing, if you're not interested and it be, you become, it life becomes boring, right? Like, I genuinely, like, am interested. I would get teased all, all the time, even, like, now, Um and my, I would always ask why all the time, like, and then like I had everyone being like when I was younger, like why, 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 you know, who am I? Why, why, why? Because like no matter what someone said to me, I'd ask, well, why? Well, why is that? Why? I just always had like a like a like a genuine curiosity. If I didn't know something or I want to know everything about you and like, like literally everything, I still do. I want to know everything yeah. about you. Justin, I want to know everything about you because I know nothing about you. Yeah. Like I want to know. And so I will ask. He's really boring actually. You yeah. Know, well, yeah. <laughs> it seems that way. That's why I'm no way. the other two. No um, way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're, not, you're not used I to this, Justin. Same. Everybody yeah. loves hey, you this the most. Is, hey, I'm going no, to pile this. on as much as I can. Yeah, I'm going to talk to this a, because a, listen, okay. <laughs> So the, the whole boldness thing like is a compliment because what, what I've talked about with Sal and like how I first met him, he has this ability to have this self-confidence and, and he just, you know, like he believes in himself like really strongly and I admire that about him. And, and that's something I saw in you in terms of like how you present yourself and like you're carrying yourself in a certain way where like I suffer from imposter syndrome. And so this is something where I've had to work through all of that and like have really tried to build myself back up to be able to portray myself in a certain way to have like this type of, you know, confidence that comes through in my speak or have opinions and really like, you know, come out with it and face that rejection but it seems like you've been able to kind of put it out there receive it just keep molding and shifting towards what's coming at you so it was a compliment at the end of the day no i i just teased you i'm curious so why did you have see why again see i'm going to be teasing why did you have imposter syndrome and how did you get over it uh again all this stuff kind of stems from your childhood i think and, and just the way that you um, listen and, and, and bring in opinions from other people and work your way through that. And so for me, it was uh, it was a lot of self talk I had to do uh, in order to get me uh, thinking of myself in a more positive light. Uh, and, and so it's just again, this is this is something that was more of a childhood thing that I I had to to get myself out of an environment where I was getting a lot of negativity and a lot of uh, insulting uh, type of uh, you know uh, comments and things my way. So uh, I, I internalized that a lot. And, and I, my, my chip on my shoulder was that I'm going to prove everybody wrong. Yeah. And I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my college degree. You know, like if, if people don't think I'm smart enough, well, I'm going to show them. And right. so like this was like a chip I've carried up on my shoulders forever. Uh, and, and so that's just my story. But I. You know, what's interesting, though, that you're saying this right now is because if you really kind of like look at you know, very successful entrepreneurs or very successful people in general in life, the through line with all of them is that they all seem to carry that same chip on their shoulder. They've all had some type of negative um, kind of experience growing up, like where even like look at Elon Musk, right? Like his dad would say to him that you're an idiot, you're not going to amount to much, much. And that pushed him 
propelled him, fueled him, so to speak, to become who he was. Michael Jordan, to, in his in his last, um, in that speech he did, mm-hmm. at the, I don't know what the... Yeah, you're asking the, the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> no. you're looking is, at the any, guy. is anyone a Michael Jordan fan? He doesn't have the yeah. jersey okay. behind yeah. him. Yeah. So okay. I really am going to keep my chair this way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't worry about that. <laughs> I know, I was going to yeah. say, this is <laughs> really... <laughs> Adam, okay. he, he's, uh, a, he's a bowler, right? The Hall of Fame acceptance speech. The Hall of Fame acceptance speech. The first thing he said was, to all those haters and stuff, Doubt yeah, people he held out there. on to that. You know, he did and because, but most people don't. look. Look at I did too. Like about yeah. when people don't respond to me, I it takes you right back to that time in your life when you felt shame and uh, mm-hmm. pain and embarrassment because someone someone like just didn't you know treat you well or they they had doubt in you or they called you stupid or you're working on amount too much. I still have the same person in my ear. Like you said, you have the person in, person in your. When I was little. I remember when I was in like high in junior high, we had this like resource teacher or like guidance counselor t- teacher. Her name was like Mrs. Raisin. So she's li- if she is listening, this goes to you, Mrs. Yeah, Raisin. Fuck you, Mrs. Super Raisin. Wrinkly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wrinkly bitch. Yes, fuck you, Mrs. Raisin. You know when you take those tests at school? I, I'm can I'm a placement Canada. test or whatever. Yeah. I don't I don't know what they are. Like you're, I was in Canada, whatever, and like the Canadian version of them. And I remember like uh, when I did my test, it came back that like. Like, I was going to be like a forest ranger. Now, not to say that it's a bad thing to be a forest ranger. I don't want to get like hate mail yeah. through you. But like, that's what it said. And I was and you're like, like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm interesting. like, how? I don't like, I'm never in the forest. I don't count. <laughs> like, it has nothing to do with who I am as a person. What the fuck is this? And so she like literally said to my mom, she's like, I'm sorry. You know, I know you have these like, you know, I, I would, I really would kind of measure your expectations when it comes to Jennifer. Oh, I don't wow. think she's going to go to like college and she's going to be like, a, you know, you should just kind of like keep your temper, your expectations. Cause I come from, a Jewish fa- everyone's a doctor and a lawyer and this and that very education super important and I remember she just and she was so condescending like she always treat even as like a small kid she was very condescending and so I still think of that damn Mrs. Raisin <laughs> to this day when I like go and like and like do something so I feel like not to like drone on and on but I feel like Justin me anybody I feel like that Elon Musk. There's Michael a lot Jordan. of there's a lot of magic there. Yeah. There's a lot of power and magic there. Yeah. In fact, you're reading a book and Patrick Bed David gets into that in that book of but here's the here's here's the uh the fine line there, right? So I agree with you. And at one point, and it'd be interesting to know of where this happened for you in your journey, you learn to not identify with that or or feel like I am that person but I'm going to use that as fuel to power me beyond this so right. that's the dance I think that's the real yeah. dance of the successful people the successful people go I ain't I'm not that dummy and I'm gonna, but I'm gonna use that to to motivate me. Right. But I'm also not gonna let that get in, creep in as self talk and call or myself ma- a dummy. Or make me have a dysfunctional relationship with business or people because I'm so driven by this insecurity. But rather, it's fuel and it's healthy fuel. I also think what happens, yeah, you can use it either as an excuse. You can go, it can take you to two different right. ways, right? As mm-hmm. an excuse and it takes you down a bad road or as fuel. But I think what's also interesting is when you use it as fuel and you do it that way, a lot happens in that process. I think that what happens is you start evolving and changing where, mm-hmm. yeah, like you remember like Mrs. Raisin or whoever it is, Michael, whoever anyone is, but yet like it's it's changing the neuroplasticity somewhat in your brain as you're acting where that becomes, you're changing to a new person, a well, new version of yourself. Well, let me ask you this because it, it, here's my opinion on it, right? Is that it's a very important skill to take something negative and in, flip it into something that becomes something positive. I think that's just an important skill, period. But I think you also have to learn to be a growth-minded person in order for that to happen. What I mean by that is, some people are not growth minded in the sense that they think this is me. I'm never going to get better. I can never be smarter or I could never do any of those things. This is my genetics or this is society or whatever outside force. Nothing can change. One thing, and we all have this in common in this room, is we all had careers in fitness. And you actually alluded to this in the beginning of the podcast. Fitness teaches you to be growth minded because you can't stick with it and not be growth minded. You suck when you do it at first. You're trying to get stronger. You're trying to get more fit. You get over the rejection and you practice and you continue to work out. And so you just become growth minded 
through that process. Was Did fitness do that for you? And was that what the catalyst that combined the two that took you to the next level? Or did it just add to something that you had already built? No, absolutely. I think that that's exactly what I was saying at the beginning is that fitness, and that's why I find it very interesting that a lot of people also have some kind of like dabble or play in the fitness space because of all the things that it taught. It made me mentally strong because once I saw myself getting physically strong and it happened by accident. So when I didn't get into that dance company, you know, that I tried out for and I got rejected for and all my friends were now going to this dance thing. I'm like, well, what am I going to do? So I started going to like the local gym instead. And, you know, it happened so like, so like, incrementally like it was like you don't even notice it until all of a sudden one day you're like uh huh but like as I saw myself getting physically stronger uh, it kind of created this like mental strength and for me they they're they so interplay with each other like the physical and the mental and it then that's when I started to have like these like goals I made for myself and the discipline where I'd go like regularly and all of those things I think that any any success I've had uh, in my life, honestly, is because of the core foundation that fitness like taught me. I really believe that. I, I do too. You know? And I, 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 for myself, and when you look at the lessons you learn through fitness, um, they're very applicable. You know, what used to blow me away when I would train clients at one point, I started training kids and I remember I trained these 14, 15 year olds and their parents were obviously were hiring me. The kids didn't, couldn't afford personal training. And their parents would come to me and say, um, you know, Johnny's grades are getting better or he's coming out of his mm-hmm. shell. Or, And I remember thinking, whoa, is this what working out is doing? But of course, because it, because of all the lessons you learn through working out. You know, I know this is turning into like all the things we love about you, but, uh, you know, episode. <laughs> but I, well, no, I don't mind. It, yeah. Let's take it for a dark turn right yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. Here's something I hate yeah. about you. No. Yeah. <laughs> No, here's, so I went to visit you down in L.A. Uh, a month or two ago um, because I was doing my book tour and you, you had me on your show. And, of course, we're ta- I, I could see how you're working with all these different businesses and building all these different things. And that was very impressive. And then something happened that I was like, this is really incredible. Your kids came home. We were about to do a podcast. Or, no, we were about to get on video for- Oh, for- the cooking with Cohen. Yes. That is going to be coming out, launching soon, by the way. Just- <clears throat> That was strategic. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I gave you the, 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 the assist there. Yeah. But we were doing, we we're about to do a video and her, and the whole set is set, right? We have, I don't know, five people in there working on it, camera people and people telling us the script and doing all this stuff. And, you know, we're getting ready to go. Her kids walk in with the nanny and she stopped everything. You stopped everything. And your son was like, mom, I need the password for this. And what about that? And you went and you took your time with your kids. And I realized that you do balance being a mom with doing all these other things. Let's talk about that for a second. That's not talked about enough. I think a lot of people who want to start business and be entrepreneurs think that they can't have that kind of balance in their lives, that they have to be crazy focused and never spend time. everything else around. Yeah, but I noticed you you, you obviously, and then we talked about your kids and the stuff you're doing with your kids and because they weren't able to go to school because of COVID, you signed them up for all these things and you're obviously very involved. How do you balance that out and do everything? Well, by the way, that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. I think that's very nice. Um, Well, number one, I think it's like very, that's very difficult. I'm not going to lie and say that, oh, I'm perfect at it because believe me, it's not at all easy. And I think that you make decisions in life, right? Like, you know, I think that I've kind of been, I'm like okay with the fact that if I made a commitment to be a mom and to have kids, then that is my priority over work. And so I'm okay with maybe never hitting the top pinnacle of where I could be because I don't really believe that you could be it, as a mom. It's different. I think there's like certain things that are just like give, that are life's things in life and you mm-hmm. have to kind of accept the things you got to accept in life. I think that I'm okay with having 75 to 80% of my career taken care of and being 100% a, a, a mom, right? Because that's yeah. my priority. I think that like, not, you, you, there's nothing that you can be exceptional at if you don't give yourself, like if you're not 100% focused. And I am divided in that. And it's very, very challenging. And I, there's a lot of guilt that comes, it comes into play with that. Uh, but, you know, I think as you get more successful, I think you have to be more and more organized and you have to really become more efficient with your time and really kind of hone in on that time management. And I think it really t- does come down to that. So I think that fortunately, like when you hit a certain success, you could have more help. 
So I have like a nanny to help me when, you know, to kind of help balance out. I have like a husband who's helpful. I have all these things that make it really helpful. But at the end of the day, I think that you have to be realistic, know like what you what what you want out of life, what is your core value system, what are non-negotiables that you're not going to like go against. And one huge non-negotiables, I never want my kids or to feel um that I, I don't want them to ever have that memory that like I didn't pay attention to them or they weren't a priority because I think that that has long lasting effects. And because I feel like I, I'm empathetic to those things, I just want to make sure that I don't do those things. So I think you just have to make like choices in life and non-negotiables and then like work that plan. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I would agree. And I think mm-hmm. it's worth it for sure. Jane, can I can I ask you some personal questions? I'm really curious to uh, the man that settles you down. Is, oh God, uh, he doesn't settle me down. <laughs> but that's, you know, so, but go so, ahead. Yeah, so sh- share uh, share with me a little bit uh, where where you guys are similar, where you are different. Give me give me a little insight on on what he what he's like. Well, I'm like a wallflower compared to him. I mean, beyond. I'm like he's a huge personality. Really? So oh, you got he's a bigger personality oh than you. Oh my god, this is what the funny thing is. Like he thinks that like I'm an introvert and like I'm like <laughs> a whole body. Wow. Yeah, I see, kid I, you not. I got to meet this guy. I kid you not. So for those of you who don't know, yeah, my husband is like he's like extremely big personality. They've wanted to do like a million TV shows on him. They've like, everybody's like, you know, he's like a big personality. He's done like a lot of like really cool shit in life. Um, And he's also somebody who in a different way is all about like not having any regret in life. So like he just came back from a week of doing kite surfing. Do you know what kite surfing is? Yeah, wow. He did that for a week. Um, He just does all sorts of like, crazy ass shit all the time he's like a normal version of like a Laird Hamilton when that you know what I mean like he does he takes he's very risky and and he's also an entrepreneur and um a self-starter so we have a lot of that stuff in common is that what connected you initially yeah like um what I I I admire in a lot of people I like people who are very much a go-getter right like and who are self who are who are uh, scrappy I think scrappiness is an attractive quality and um that's for me I mean everyone's different and he's very scrappy and he's like done everything on his own which again, like I think it builds character when you do that versus just being hand, you know, being similar businesses things. as you or total nothing, different. Oh field. God, nothing what field, to what do, field nothing is nothing to do with mine. So he, he's an, he also, he owns a few different businesses. One business is he does like, it's like so random. He does like, he has like a manufacturing plant where they recycle oil drums. Okay. That's one business. Then he has a business where he is, a, he owns a very big marketing company where they do like, um, really, they create like crazy experiences. So like he just did this, he did this uh, Indy 500 bar stools party that was for like 7,000 people with Machine Gun Kelly and oh, wow. M- M- a Diplo and he does the Super Bowl stuff and he does the MLB stuff and he creates these like crazy extraordinary experiences. Um, but he was also, when I met him, he was known as like the uh, biggest girl wrangler in the country, which is so <laughs> crazy and That's Wait, embarrassing. That's girl a great title. Yeah. That's literally Put what that he was known for. Like, he, he would pick all the Maxim girls. That's one of the things. Like he never was one dimensional, right? Like that's what I'm saying. He did a little bit of this. He was, he's extraordinarily academically smart. And he also is extraordinarily like scrappy and that has that side, which is kind of like usually not always go, that doesn't really go no, hand in hand. Different. Right. So when I met him, oh my God, this is crazy. Did he so, come after you? Did you go after him? What, he went after me. Oh, yeah. wow. I met him at a dinner. I was actually, I broke, I, I was with this other guy and we broke up that, this one night and I was going to a dinner that, 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 that the night after was a Passover dinner. I'm Jewish. And I called up my friend who was having this dinner and I'm like, hey, me and uh, Adam broke up, whatever. I don't really, yeah. it doesn't matter if he listens. Hi, Adam. Um, <laughs> fuck you, Adam. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> you and Mrs. Jen, Raisin. Give me a chance. Big mistakes. <laughs> Actually, Adam's a very nice guy. I'm just kidding. I mean, but yeah. But anyway, he'd say fuck you, Jennifer, to me. Yeah. But that's besides the point. So I, I broke up with my boyfriend and I'm like, okay, so Adam's not coming. So you have an extra chair. So you can invite someone else. And so my friend had this like joint stater with this other person. And so she invited Noah as a, as her date. His name is Noah, my husband. And then um, I met him there. So 
it, long story. I'm, I'm like I'm losing my track of what was happening. But anyway, that's how we met. And then he we we started like he's, he when he obviously he started like he asked me out whatever. I didn't by the at the dinner. I actually thought he was a rabbi because he was like very knowledgeable. But the, <laughs> with, with the prayers, I literally thought he was a rabbi coming to. I, he looked like the rabbi. He wore like this you know, the suit and his hair was flat and he looked like he looked like not how he normally looks. So I'm like, who's this guy? So then when he like pursued me I was very like I didn't understand who he was and then he picked me up his hair was all spiked and crazy and strange and weird and like he was a crazy dancer he was like he dances like Justin Timberlake would do dance offs with him all the time and so but anyway at the time I would have these situations with him because he would like I didn't know this at the time but he would pick all the girls for Maxim like all the covers and all the hot uh, what do you call those like I don't know what they what, what you call them in the magazine like we'll say models models okay and so he would have databases on his phone of like thousands of girls thousands of pictures <laughs> and their girls would come and like to, you know to the, my house and like pose for him so they could take pictures and he would like he would like and like he was so like desensitized because that's all he, he that's all he, he did so much of it yeah. where he would get hired by all of these companies like major fortune like 100 companies to basically create like sexiness for the party so like he uh-huh. would be like he would be like the secret sauce so if a party wanted to be if a company wanted to be super hot or super sexy or like elevate themselves they would call his company and he would like bring the shit and so that's like was like how he was like well known like really well known wow. and so like guys would love him because he had like like databases of like that like the hottest girls you can ever imagine this is so not pc right now <laughs> that's all right <laughs> and, yeah but we, you know what this is real life shit I, I feel I, i'm gonna get in so much shit no, for you're saying not. This no, stuff. I, yes yeah. i am i was i was it's like fr- not me too friendly <laughs> uh, yeah but it's the tr- there's a lot of that stuff i was friends with a a guy that was this this russian dude that was a multi multi-millionaire and did recycling metal and we would go to Vegas and all these trips together. And he always had this entourage of a beautiful. There's always 10 to 15 like gorgeous model looking girls. He probably paid them though. Well, that's what yeah. I found out later on. There was a service. So that's why I'm. Yeah, no, no. He's not I'm, like, he's I'm not very a pimp. familiar. Yeah. yeah, but he's like, you know what you. No, there's companies that you can hire and they, it's cost X amount of dollars and the girls hang out with you. Well, they, that's okay. What, that's a whole different thing. So listen, like if you, he was on the cover, he was on the cover of Maxim, I think, or not on the cover. He was like, there's like a huge thing above him in it because his whole business he made like a lot of money by he was always super on point and ethical never crossed the line nothing like that I promise you and I'm not just saying that because I'm being uh I'm being um recorded recorded but because it's true but I will tell you his thing was more about like crowds and models because the truth of the matter is people don't want to believe this but you know at the time you know, you go where hot girl guys will go where the hot girls are. Money right. goes where the hot girls are. So, like parties were like infiltrated with this this illusion of a certain thing, and that's what he was good at. Uh, mm-hmm. But I will tell you something interesting. He has been asked, even to this day, even back then, everybody that major names of people, celebrities, and multi, the the biggest billionaires in the world, the biggest everybody would contact my husband regularly to ask for that kind of situation. Uh, and he would never, ever, ever, that is so not his style. Uh, um, and like my husband doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke, doesn't do anything. Like he's such a partier. He can stay up till six o'clock in the morning just on like hot being high on life, but never with that stuff. But like there is a fine line between both of those things, I promise you. But sure. and my point is he's a big personality, larger than life. And um, you know, it's a good it could be a good thing, but it's also kind of like he it, it could did, be a clash sometimes. I too. was gonna okay, so that's where I was gonna get at. When yeah. you have two Oops really big personalities like that in like a room like what is that do you do you step back does he step back do you guys kind of overstep each other sometimes like what is that I go look? in one one corner of the room and he goes in the other corner of the yeah no I'm kidding what happens normally is he's super super support you know one thing another thing about him is very interesting is that he is is he is super naturally confident he doesn't feel uh, in, like mass, like emasculated or like insecure by my success or my or anything about me. In fact, he's the he is my biggest fan and he's super super proud of me. Like he he will he will always um, 
not take a step back because he doesn't need to. I think both of us give each other a lot of leeway and a lot of like room and we're and we're not there's no there's no like neediness in that or like yeah. insecurity in that. Like I want him to thrive and I want him to do well. He wants me to thrive, he wants me to do well, and we just like let we just let that be. So there's not like there's not any kind of like friction when it comes to that. And I think that's why it works because I'm allowed to be who I want to be and do what I need to do. And he supports all of that. And then I think I do the same because a lot of people probably in my, as a woman being married to someone like my husband in what he does for a living or he did that more. Now his business is not about that as much. It's changed yeah. over the last few years. Um, but like, it's about like, I think really it's about like, honestly, it's honesty and it's trust. Like I trust him. And I feel my thing is like, if you hold something so tight like that, that's when things like become a problem. Yeah. But if you let someone just be who they are and like, let them like, kind of like do what they do. It like, it, it kind of like, it kind of just works much, much. So better. you guys are, you guys together are hosting a party of 50 people at your house. What roles are you taking? Who, what, what's he doing? What are you doing? Well, he's all, he knows how to. He's much better at that stuff. I'm not very domesticated that way. He is much better. Well, the role is like he's he he's a great host. I'm an okay host, but like I I like to. My thing is if I'm at a party, I like to hone in on one person or two people that I really really like and like learn everything about them because of that curiosity element that's just a part of me. He likes to talk to everybody. Yeah, he's working the room. Works the room again. He's. He's a people person, um, and I'm a people person, but in different ways. I like to have the specific people that I really get to know because I think having one or two close friends sometimes is better than having a bazillion friends. Yeah. Um, and you know, he was, he just he's very interested in people and loves people, and is I'm I'm a little more discerning. I little I would say to be honest, yeah. but. Um, He's much more macro and I'm much more micro at a party. Mm. You know, one thing too is you you meet a lot of uh, important people, celebrities. You don't seem like somebody that would, you know, like I remember when I was managing gyms for the first time in the gym, I was very confident, but I remember when I had to do my first, what were called corporate accounts. And these were where I'd go to big companies, I'd speak to the CEO or the CFO, and we talk about a potential corporate membership for their employees. And I was intimidated because they had suits on, they're sitting behind a desk, it's a big company. And I remember it intimidating me and I had to get used to it. You don't seem like someone that's intimidated very easily by meeting people like that. Is that because of practice? Is that something you had to get over? Or do you just see people as people and you don't care? I, You know what? I, I, I think I, I just see people as people, but I think... That's also practice because I think that over time, it's over my life. I've been in so many different industries, right? I was in the sports industry, sports world. I worked for the Toronto Raptors and I worked for the music world. I worked for a record label. I've worked with musicians, artists, athletes. I've worked with, you know, in the fitness space, tons of fitness. I was a media trainer. I worked with like, I media trained every, like tons of different CEOs and people in that level. I've, I feel like I've, I've kind of like been around so many different people and what I've learned from all of that experience is the through line is everybody is the same. Everybody so everyone wants the same things. They are the same. They just want to be they just you they want to be talked to and seen as the sa is in the same light as anybody else. Like a lot of times, you know, it's it, it, people even say like it's usually when you meet like a major celebrity, right? Like they're usually not the dick. It's usually the assistant who's mm. usually the problem, right? Like because it's like it's that like feeling of um, that you that you haven't arrived yet. Like you that like feeling of regret or that feeling that the, the power <clears throat> thing that you feel is when you don't have it. I think once you've arrived at something, people are just people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And do you do you coach uh, like men and women for entrepreneurship and business? I do a lot of, I, I kind of morphed my fitness business initially into the, the high performance. So like when I was doing a lot of the media training, that kind of morphed into more of the high performance because you're still, you're, you're, you're still teaching the same building 
blocks, right? Like how, again, it's about like having having a focus and having goals, to having goals and how are you going to, re- you know, reach those goals. So I did that a lot with like CEOs and a lot of uh, hype, like a lot of like C-level or C-suite um, executives. Do you see a difference between the challenges that men and women have uh, doing this? Because I know your, your talk that you did on TED was about boldness. And I feel like there, there's probably a lot of women you are resonating with because, it, you know, stereotypically women might be a little bit more or less, uh, you know, maybe less bold or less willing to put themselves out there. I've heard this uh, as, as a challenge. Do you see differences between the two when you, general differences between the two when you coach them? Between male, men? Yeah. Um, absolutely, I do. I think uh, women are, like, to your point, I think there's a little bit, there's much more apprehend apprehension to go to chase what they want or to to go after what they want and they'll take the good enough much easier men are much more they're naturally more bold i should say to to kind of to go after that and i think it's because what you guys were saying earlier is that you guys got so used to that rejection piece that it became kind of part of your like dna where it was easier I think women have that like extra obstacle to feel okay with asking for what they want more and getting over that self doubt hump and that 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 self doubt can can be a real you know a real hindrance. How do you coach people through that? I think understanding. I think the the, the best tool in personal development is self awareness, and I think the reason behind that is. You know, if you really know yourself and, and and kind of can really like sit with yourself and figure out where that where where that comes from, what your core you know um, self doubt comes from, like where the the at the root of it, what's the root cause of where it comes from, and then work from there is really really important. I think if you people don't like to do that, they like to lie to themselves. They don't want to like have that rawness even for themselves. But I feel like if they if they're able to kind of know who they are more and kind of build within that. That's the first step. I think also another big one is having like teaching someone to have more compassion for themselves. I think that ends up having more emotional resilience. I think it's really easy to have compassion for someone else. Like for you, if you, if something happened and, or to your friend, what you say to your friend is very different than what you say to yourself and trying to like train your brain by practice uh, to talk to yourself differently is a really helpful tool as well. Um, I think overcoming self-doubt is also looking at the circle around you and looking like who, who is who are the, f- the five people that you surround yourself with the most, right? Because a lot of times those people are infiltrating, the external infiltrates your internal to what we were talking about before with you, Justin, and me, and everyone else. We get a lot of our ideas from what what others think of us close to us. So like be, surround yourself with supportive people and also like find validation from within. Don't look for outside validation. Like find something about yourself that gives you strength, what makes you feel, what what are you good at? And kind of like focus and lean into that more. I heard you talking about um, uh, knowing what you want. Uh, you know, like you got to know what you want. Like, what do you mean by that? Well, if you don't, you ain't going to get it. That's well, yeah. Well, but, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but, I think, but I think a lot of people listening are like, well, I know what I want. But you, you talk a lot about like, no, really knowing what, you, what you're looking I for. Think it's, I think people, I think the majority of people don't know what they want. They, they, have an, mm. a, they may have like an, a, an idea, yeah. but I think, but they don't really know. And I think it also is a moving target. I think as right. you like go through life, you like, you can shift and evolve and change what you want, Right. And I think that 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 whole self awareness piece is super important. I think the better you know yourself, the more you know what you want, right? Like what your core belief system is, what your core values are, what your non negotiables are, what you like or what you don't like. It could be as simple as that. Like I don't like this, but I do like this. Mm -hmm. So let's lean into this. Or like I'm really bad at this, and I'm really good at this. Okay, so lean into what you're good at. And make that what you focus on in terms of your like career, and then like find people that you're you know to kind of supplement your weak areas. Mm. I think nothing is built with one person. You need like te- you need a team to be successful, and I think the the whole like no 
you you get to know what you want by by starting with the foundation of who you are. Hundred hmm. percent. Okay. So does that what, make sense? Yeah, yes, no, one hundred percent. What's uh, what is your current vision then for getting into podcasting? Like, what do you what do you want from that? And I know you're very self aware. So, how is that unfolding? What are you doing well? What are you not doing so well? What do you see others doing well that you want to be better at? What do you tell me? What what does that look what that looks like for you right now? That's a really good question. I'll tell you. So, um. What I like, what I love about it, is that I get to speak and talk to people who I think are really, really interesting, and I can learn what they do. Again, it's like I, 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 I choose people as guests who I think are doing something extraordinary, or who have done something extraordinary, or and I want to learn from them what their habits are. What, how, why did they become so successful? What is, what has been their path? What is, what, what do they do? And then I want to like. I want to like try to like take that information and like make it apply and, and apply it to myself, to my life, and to the my listeners, right? Like I think that's the most like w- the same thing with your podcast, right? Like you guys give such valuable information that you, you give people a reason to tune in. Like I want to listen to what you guys are saying, and there's like raw honesty, right? So I think that's what I like about my podcast because I, I I think that people are coming on there like Sal who are giving some really good information and great tips and tools that people can apply to their life um, what I don't what I, what I find interesting is the podcast space is so competitive it's so saturated it's really really hard to stand out and to um, even be known unless you have other ways of doing it. Like unless you're really good at marketing and partnering with people who can help elevate you or, you know, to get on the charts and everything like that. Like every, there's, there's so much like business stuff and behind the scenes stuff that people don't even think of if they actually want to make the, their podcast a success or like a quote unquote hit. Like if you just want to be a podcaster and, and podcast because you just genuinely love to speak to people, but you're not looking at it as a business, that's a totally different animal right but to get to the level like even that you but that you guys are at right like where you built an entire media company around it it's people don't understand like the amount of hours and time and effort and people behind the scenes that make that a reality right like and I'm learning all of that as I as I go and it's a lot of work what is uh what surprised you so far so for you know and I'll give you a softball pitch with like the, our first example of that. I remember we had, when we were tiny, we just started, we had the first uh, person that had a quarter million followers mm-hmm. that was going to come on our show. Wow. Like, just a local friend who he'd been on the bachelor and we're like, <laughs> you know, we could call, I was like, Hey, let's call him. He's got a massive following. Yeah. And we were so excited. Cause you're talking about at this time, none of us are known at all. We're yeah. just getting going on this podcast. And we were like sitting on pins and needles for like, because at that point we're thinking, okay, we have maybe a thousand people paying attention to us. This guy comes on with a quarter million. We're taking we're gonna off. We're going to blow up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and we're like sitting with, and like crickets. Crickets, no, yes. No, nothing happened. So have there been things like that? I, I, all the time. I, I would tell you all the time, things that I thought would like super, like would, would like just like take it to the next level over and over again. Pe- like massive people I've had on where like it, it was literally crickets. It was might as well like just be like shooting a cannon through like a, you know, a, a, an empty room. It was like nothing. And I find that like a lot of times what we were saying earlier is that like I have had a lot of people on that you don't even know I had on because I won't even air the episodes because they were such bad episodes. <laughs> and so like I learned from like, you know, a couple of things when I put people on who like were really, really well known and I thought that was going to like totally take me to the next level and put me through the stratosphere and like it didn't do anything that I realized quite fast it wasn't that. Like at the end of the day you need like have you have to have really good content. Yes. And if you don't have good content no one's going to listen because there's too much there's too much competition out yeah. there. But the, with that being said, I'll also say there's a lot of podcasts out there that have very good content, but they have two listeners because nobody knows that they exist. So like, I'm going to ask you guys that question. Like, what do you think you need to do? Because if it's about have, if it's only, or if it's a lot of it, it's about having good content, then why is that not just enough to kind of Well, because there's so, you, you alluded to it already. There's there's a ton of competition and there's a ton of other places. Like for example, like to the point of 
like big guests. Uh, Matthew McConaughey recently did his rounds. I think you even interviewed him too. Didn't I you? did. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and I didn't send our team to go after him. And I said, you know, I have already seen him on 30 something podcasts already before we were even thinking yeah. about reaching out. And I, and I love Matthew McConaughey and I think it would have been, and he, I listened to his conversations on many podcasts, but that's just it. There's an abundance of people that are interviewing him. So one, one thing that I think is very important, and we've learned this over the last six and a half years is just becoming better at your job, which is just purely practice. Mm -hmm. So nothing is going to, is going to trump reps, which you've already alluded to right. that already is just, and I mean, and what I mean by that, to be more specific for somebody who's interested in the podcasting space is. I mean, I even pay attention to the the ums, the you knows, uh, the fear of pause and silence yeah. on the podcast. Right, right, that would right. scare the shit out of me. Oh yeah, we used to fill that four years ago, and because we had the gift of gab, uh, that pause would happen, and I would insert and Sawa and Justin. We would just be always doing this and learn to just relax and and slow down the conversation. Recognize that the listener, it doesn't feel like that. So there's a lot of like things like that that you start to get better at your craft. Another thing that I think literally this is just happening for us right now. So this is kind of neat to talk to you about. Um, I believe our last five interviews are the best interviews we've ever done. And it doesn't matter who the person is. We did a uh, tonal is CEO. We did a uh, whole 30 girl. We did uh, this guy on a doc, this kid on a documentary. We did an economist, but it's not them. It's that we are getting more comfortable with asking the hard questions. And not being a and because when you're a friendly person and you and you like and you like to like people and you like them to like you, you you tend not to want to piss them off. But for great radio or television or YouTube, whatever, uh, you know, controversy and struggle for your guest is really good content. And so it took us a long time to get over that hurdle of you know what? I'm going to fucking ask that question. It, he's not going to like it or she it's might. what everybody wants you to ask. Yeah. A, a hundred. I could not agree with you more. And I think that is so, so true. And I also think the problem is more, it's getting harder now, not so much because of what you're doing, but it's about this, about cancel culture and not, not being on point with what's mainstream. So a lot of people now, and what I find is happening, which is watering down a lot of content on podcasts, is the fear of being shunned or canceled or whatever, where then you're getting very beige content, very beige answers, very beige questions, because there's that fear element, right? Yeah. That happens. Now, we're, the, the, we're, we're the wrong people for that. Well, not because only, we don't we don't care. Not and, only that, but the the entrepreneur in me sees the huge opportunity in that. Absolutely, because right yeah. everybody's doing that. That's right. There's you your blue. The, there's your yeah. blue ocean. Right and there. also, like you know, stand steady and and tall and strong. And when you're building your audience, you pick and choose kind of how what kind of audience you want to build. We open the gates that way. And so we've conditioned our, you know, people comment. It's funny. I was on a podcast this morning and uh, I was getting interviewed and it was Dr. Becky Campbell. And she says, oh my God, I love your, your listeners. They're the best listeners are hilarious. I love the comments that they put. We built it. We trained them that way. So they're not going to get like, if I build my audience with this, like, Ooh, I'm careful. I don't want to be honest and I got to be careful. Yeah, I don't PC. want to I'm going to, and I'm going to be beholden to that all the time. Then yeah. I'm going to get canceled by my own people. Well, that's why I also have to, you know, consider if you're bringing on sponsorships and, and you're, you're beholden to, to, yes. you know, all these companies coming in and having control of your content, which right away from the beginning, we, we made a, a point of that, that we're not going to have like supplement companies and, and we're not going to do the same formula. Every fitness company's done forever, uh, getting into the space. We're just going to, you know, do our own thing and blaze our own yeah. path. I'll give you an example. This is hilarious, by the way. So we worked, we worked with a company. I'm not going to get too specific with this because <laughs> we got a little trouble with this, but we were the company that has a supplement that is very, we like very effective for what it does. But it also, because it's all natural and it's not super flavored, tastes like crap. It just doesn't taste good. And literally that was how we would talk about it. I would talk about using it and Adam would be like, ah, oh, it just tastes like crap, but it does work. And I remember the sponsors, <laughs> yeah. the sponsors getting and upset. We sold it. The sponsors are getting upset. Like, wh wh why would you say that? Whatever. And we're like, listen, we're being honest. Why don't you wait to see how many people buy your product and then come back? Guess what? They were, they're fine. Why? Because the honesty was very effective at selling the product because we're just being honest. We're just totally being honest. Anyway. Whereas other people might be afraid and be like, don't mention it or lie about it. But we're going to tell you, look, it's effective. 
tastes like crap because it's all natural, but that's okay because it does all these other things. But I love that about you guys. I think that authenticity and that that honesty is refreshing because the, unfortunately, the majority of people are not doing that, especially and, in this yeah. space. Especially in this space, and like to what you you know what I to, let's even talk about that Matthew McConaughey thing for a second because you know what like what's happening a lot, not just with him, but like. Everybody has the same guests. It's all recycled shit. Same over, conversation. Same yeah. shit. And if you actually listen, and I, this has happened to me a lot of times, where like I'm researching a guest, oh, right? Oh, and because he gives we, you the same interview it, that it, you, literally. I'm like, why bother? Just go listen to so and so's interview. To the to the same sound bites, the same stories, the same pauses. Like, oh yeah, that reminds me of. Yeah. And goes into the story. I'm like, so okay, so that that's a, such a great point, right? And we definitely fell for this also oh, yeah. and we afterwards we'd all talk and be like fuck man he literally just took over so and that's a little bit of us being better at interviewing right so this is something that i think uh joe rogan does so well uh, he he doesn't he, he may not look like he's having a really good interview but that man has done extremely good research on those people and he does a great job of taking the conversation you know and and i've seen him get guests that have their sound bites and he will disrupt that and so that's on us right to be yeah. better about seeing that coming and be like ah and i've done this before where i've stopped yeah. somebody like ah, I've, I've heard you say this before but i want to you know i want to know more about this or why you say that right so you know that's part of getting better at an interviewer is is knowing that they have their agenda and what they're going to want to say i want to disrupt that if i want you even as a guest because sometimes we won't even let somebody on the show like that if i think they that's all they're they're all is yeah. if they have an agenda to sell a book that's yeah. it but you, like, know, but you know but you know exactly that's yeah. true yeah but you know at the end of the day if you do a good job of impacting people like in real ways they're going to sell the shit out of you and that's how you're going to grow at the end of the day you have to do that and there's really no other way to effectively grow a, a, a podcast business or other media business, unless you're really impacting people, and then they through word of mouth. Because you, I've, we've all done this. You ever listen to a podcast, and you're like, "Holy shit, man! I got to send this to four people," and you end up sharing it. You're like, "You got to listen to this guy. He's really or this woman. Oh my god, she's." And so that's the goal. The goal is always to do that because uh, I, I, I mean, I don't know any marketing that's as effective. Well, I'll give you something else. That, yeah, that, I, I agree. The the organic shares are very important, but. Okay, sorry, you're going to say something. Yeah, I was just something else that, it, you know, maybe you can use that I think, look, and this is me looking back and unpacking the business and the growth and what worked, what didn't work. Uh, something that I think that it, it just, it worked itself out. I don't think any of us were like b brilliant and thought it was a great strategy. Uh, it was just go speaks to the uh, authenticity part. And that was, we shared uh, very openly a lot of the business from the very beginning, like what our strategy was, why we're not doing this, like, oh, we're starting to make money now. Like, uh, that's something a lot of people are afraid to do. They're afraid to like let people know how they're making money or this, that. But a lot of people are really curious, especially if they've become attracted to you and your podcast and they already kind of like you as a host. The more you share about your journey through this whole thing, too, I think pays off a lot and has helped us out a, a, tr a ton. So I, I totally agree with you. I was going to say two things uh, to that point. Um, I've, I agree. And that's why I'm, I'm an open book. I mean, I try, and I think that what you know, Sal and I were talking about this when I entered this space and I like asked people for like legit, like, you know, I, I, you know, just in, in full transparency, like, how do I do this? Or how do, do I do that? And they were so, people are so, um, Forget about the, even the audience, just from, from like podcaster to podcaster. So they, ho they, they hold their information so tight. They don't <laughs> want to help you. But the reality is, it's like, if I, and I really, and I'm not just saying this for, as a platitude, but I really believe it. I, and I, and I, I always lead with this. The more I've helped people and given to them, it's always come back to me mm -hmm. tenfold. I never hold that information. If you want to contact, I'll give it, gladly give it to you. And you're not lying. Mm -hmm. I've done this with you. I've asked you oh, questions and you're totally open. A hundred percent. And like, does it come back? Um, mostly, well, not by those people, maybe never. I would say it, nine times out of ten it doesn't, but that one that does 100%. is worth a hundred people, right? right. Yeah. That's and like, but it's people who also claim that they're your friends, they're your work friends, and they, <laughs> it's the same people who come to you and ask for help over and over and over again, but yet, like, you, they, when you ask a, a, a one co one thing, it's like coveted. They won't help you with anything. And like, the, a funny thing is, I was going to tell you about the podcasting, the guest, I've always had 
better call, like some, not always, a lot of times the, the best interviews or the best conversations happen off of the microphone, yeah. offline versus online because people are so scared and so uncomfortable with like, open uh, like rawness and honesty but if they were just that way on the podcast it would have been so much better yeah. you know you do this we, yeah. we started doing this well we, we just did it to you yeah we stopped we stopped I mean, telling people recording already yeah, we, we stopped telling people we turn on the we turn oh because that's what happened. i did that too by the way yeah, yeah it works yeah. otherwise we're like all right we're about to start and then all of a sudden they, eh, yeah. all right formal intros are the worst yeah. Just, yeah. that's exactly i never do it yeah. but then i then what happens is i get awkward because i'm like uh because i'm not as seasoned as you guys but i'm like should i be like because I, I i'm talking to him and they'll almost nine out of ten times I'd be like so when are we starting and I'm like oh well, we've been we going yeah we've been <laughs> yeah, starting okay. and then they're like well aren't you going to do it like aren't you going to say who I'll I do it am afterwards. and I say I'll do it after yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the same thing yeah. every time because that's the only way no that's a great hack I think that's you know? a, I, for any podcasters listening it was it was definitely one of those you know we look back at pivotal moments of the show when it evolved and got better one of the most pivotal moments was when we stopped doing the formal intro of sitting down like okay mm-hmm. this is Jen Cohen and then we go into this whole it's so awkward. It's so awkward. They freeze up. You get all fumbly trying to remember all their shit. It's, it's so like, awkward. The whole experience, that whole thing is so, that is a great, I think that is a ha- great hack because it's so awkward. And even in any interview or anything, whenever someone like, I, I hate formality. I'm really bad with it. I get very weird and uncomfortable and anxious around it. So like, I just try to do to others as I would like to be done to me, right? Like the, the truth. Like, we would never have a conversation like that, no. right? So why would I do it any different? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So. Like the second you and you also you you just you you disrupt that like flow. Yeah. Right? Because like then you'll be like, okay, then let's start now. And it's like, oh, okay, you know, and it yeah. becomes I f I'm so sorry. I feel like I'm focusing solely on you. This That's happened right. last yeah, it's, yeah, no, <laughs> He's the handsome one. Yeah. yeah. I focus yeah. on him too all the yeah, time. Yeah, no, right. I feel like my chair just swivels left yeah. naturally. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not and like I feel I think badly. You did it that it's way. A we, well, we have a lot in common too. I and mean, we that do was, have a lot in common. Yeah, yeah. No, you're you've uh, a, a lot of the uh, you know, behind the scenes, and I'm glad that we're we're sharing this for the audience and stuff because it, we don't talk about it a lot. But, and I'm sure the guys would agree with me that a lot of the success we've had is because of the relationships that we've built offline. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Off, offline, we have, we've built a lot yeah. of good you, relationships with a lot you of You know, people. I want to comment to oh. what you were saying about when people hold information tight, like they're, they're looking at you like a competitor. And yeah. I remember the first time I learned what you said about, you know, uh, how it t- things tend to elevate. I remember managing a, a big gym and then a big, another big company, a competitor, opened up a gym not too far. And I remember at first being like, oh, crap, a competitor's here. Like, this is going to, like, hurt our business. But then I started to see people walking in my door who that gym's advertising got these people to just start looking at gyms. So they went to that gym, then they come to mine. Oh, I just looked at the new one. I wanted to see what the competition was. My volume of people that walked in my gym increased because it brought more awareness around fitness in my area. So to podcasting, when podcasters who are just so stupid, they don't see beyond their own nose, they don't, especially right now, podcasting is still in its infancy. It still has yet to even come close to the size of talk radio. Talk radio used to be so massive, right? Podcasting is going to get there. It's digital audio. It's going to get there. And so these these other podcasts are so dumb because the more really good podcasts that exist, the more popular, the more people come to podcasting. I mean, if you just stayed where you were and the whole genre grew, so would you. Yes. But they don't realize that. They think it's, it's competition. Scarcity. It's such a dumb mentality and it's so counterproductive, but it's that whole scarcity. It's a scarcity mindset. abundance thing. Yeah. It's exactly, it's all about scare, scare, uh, scare. and also it's, what's weird is it's in a different genre. Like a lot of times it's a lot of right. different genres. It's Not like, even something competitive, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm talking about apples and you're talking uh, about like politics. Like yeah. what's the difference? Yeah. And it's like, it's. I think it's just like that abundance scarcity thing. And I, I think that that's like a mindset that people have to try to like, get over because it's only like at the end of the day it's going to hurt them more than anything right Mm because you know i also think that water finds its level right like you gravitate eventually to people that you're similar to that help push you and propel you to the next place to the next place and um and that's about partnerships too i think that you find partnerships that help you and grow and help build your business like 
you you grow, you truly grow into an empire when you have really strong strategic partners around you. Oh, you have to. This you know? this would not be possible with my partners. There's no way. Their 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 strengths are definitely some yeah. of my weaknesses and in no way. No yeah, way. I was actually going to comment on that earlier because, you know, your strengths being uh, networking and something I've taken from Adam and he's really good at this is creating systems around that and, and having follow ups and emails and gifts and, and just thoughtful things for people that we've uh, met before or have done business with. Is there systems that you have in place and and things that you've put to, to, to be able to manage all these people? Well, yes, I think that like the networking piece is super, obviously super important. And I think that you you lead with what I can help you with, not the opposite. So don't, you don't build a relationship by asking for something out of the gate, right? right? Like, I think that's like the biggest faux pas. Like, if you really want to build and develop a relationship, lead with what I, like, what you can do for them. You know, what can I do for you? And I think that like, that is, a that's like step one, Mm -hmm. right? Like, I think, I also think having, and this goes back to, and it's not that I'm trying, it's not that it's, uh, Machiavellian and it's not that it's um, strategically it's not like it's a being an opportunist it's actually just being like what how again like human nature and psychologically how you would respond in that situation right if if I if you meet somebody and right off the bat they ask you for something without knowing you it's a turnoff it like puts you mm-hmm. like it puts you on the defensive it's uncomfortable but if 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 you lead with like you know actually being curious and interested in wh- who they are and what they are, number one. I should say that's really number one. Like have interest and curiosity to kind of really understand and know who they are and then lead with how you, what you can, how can they, how can you be of service or help them with something? The be of service and, and, and help is really the step two. And from there, things will take its, you know, course what Adam was saying, what you're saying with Adam, the follow up is so key too, because so many times things die on the vine because it's you you start that friendship, you, can, you go strong out of the gate, and then it like you know whittles and dwindles down into pure nothingness. Because mm-hmm. in order mm-hmm. to really build a relationship, is you need to have shared experiences, you need to have you have to have longevity and like interaction over a course of time, right? It's it's not just like, okay, you you lead strong with a really hard, you know, you meet them, you're it's great, da, 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 and then there's like it's empty. So it's like having reasons to constantly re-engage with somebody. And um and you do that, you know, in a natural, organic way. Like if you have shared interests, if you have shared things remembering what they've told you. If they said something, you know, follow up with like, oh, whatever happened with this or whatever happened with that or, you know, remembering people's names, you know, like it sounds so stupid and it sounds very much like, you know, that book, Dale, you know, How to Win Friends and yeah. Influence People. Wisdom. But Lots of wisdom in that. A lot of wisdom. And I think like sometimes there's no, th- people are looking to make the most basic, simple things complicated. Mm-hmm. And it's so not necessary. It's like fitness. Mm-hmm. Like it's all the same. It's like, you know, people need consistency to be successful, right? People, you know, repetition mm-hmm. and, you know, to build friendships, to, to build a, a healthy body, whatever. But like at the end of the day, at you know, it's about kind of like following, fo- like kind of creating those steps and just kind of going with yeah. that. I don't think it's with what I was going to say about fitness is people are looking for this magic pill or a magic bullet to get these great results, just like in networking too. It's like, Actually, it's not that complicated and it's not that difficult. It's like really like, you know, have interest in who you're talking to, you know, kind of like be cognizant of like how you could be of service or help them and follow up once in a while. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, it's yeah. not that complicated. It's one of, one yeah. of our biggest pet peeves is we'll get because we have a, a team, obviously, that that filters people who want to be on the show. And we'll get an email from someone that's like, hey, would you like to have me on your show? <laughs> And, oh, yes. and then we'll, and then we'll, we'll see that they have a podcast and they're like, that's how you open, you have your own podcast. You Please should ask, stop doing that. Yeah. You should ask us to be guests first and then possibly we'll have you on. Yeah. But they, they open with uh, do you want me on your show? You know what I mean? It's like, wait, you have a podcast too. <laughs> I know. On well, that that happens a lot with people who have bigger pot, like big, big podcasts sure. too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I, I never understand how people have not like figured, like it's like, a lot of these things, like common sense isn't so common, right? No. Like yeah. that's just the bottom line. You would think that these things over time, people would kind of like 
realize um, just from experience. Yeah. And it's, I think it's, again, it's like a skill that it's easy to, that's an easy skill to master if you just, if you actually just. You care. If you care. You care. Yeah. People, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And if you lead with that in relationship building, it's a very powerful thing. And it is that simple, but you just got to care. If you don't really give a shit and you just want, you know, and you're, you're looking for something in return, you're gonna have a hard time with it. Well, yeah. And it also, it, it, it ends up flatlining pretty, it, pretty quickly because right. those things never really do have a really long shelf life. Right. You know, no, it really don't. doesn't. Yeah, they don't. That was yeah. a Jim Quickie in there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> stupid, dude. Very good. Has he been on your podcast? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah they're you know how he does that? He'll like say something and flip it yeah. and yeah. says the same thing, but the just guys flip. tease him all the time. Yeah, like, I oh, thought he was. Was good. He was oh, good. he was right. Yeah, he, was right. Right. he had his talking points for sure. Yeah. He has his talking points. Yeah. I've seen him like a bit. Oh, I should. Yeah. Again, I'm gonna be like I have. I'm so not PC because yeah. I forget that this thing is. You gotta on. be careful with me because I'm the same way. So <laughs> I'll pull it right out. <laughs> Honestly, of you. Yeah. I got. I know because like, I'm gonna start shifting my chair yeah. right. Yeah. You know. All right, tell us your least favorite guests. Go. I know, right? I was gonna, oh my God, I was going to actually almost, I didn't air it actually, thankfully. Uh, uh, how many of you not aired? That's actually crazy because there's not that 20? many. A lot. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You've, you've oh, done 20. Uh, you haven't aired. Well, her podcast lot. is interview heavy. She does a lot of interviews. That's so. true. I, I know, actually but don't still. do as many as you. Really? Oh, actually, how many do you do? We don't do a ton at all. Barely any. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you guys are great. You have like, you have someone you can banter exactly. with. Exactly. I have nobody I can banter with. It's actually so, it's like, who am I? I don't want to just talk to myself. Yeah, it's not no, no. fun. No, it's a different, it's totally it's different, a different challenge. Dynamic. I'll come hang out with you anytime you want. Anytime. Yeah. I can't help 20. 20. Wow. I've had, a, and there, some of them are like so, really big. Okay, so tell me, uh, which I think is interesting because I've had to deal with this which is, is always awkward. How is the, the conversation of letting them know it's not being aired? Can I tell you something? It's <laughs> it's very, I have a lot of haters probably right now because I have a lot of people who like are contacting my team being like, so when is it airing? It's been like a year. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they have like- the checks a, in the mail. They, they have still a new think book it's gonna coming. happen? They have a new oh, book man. or yeah, like a new project. But like, I, I just- you know, I want to be able to pull the trigger and be like, okay. And then I feel guilty and I'm like, oh, maybe I should just air it. But it's like so bad where it's like, I, I don't want to do that to my audience. And I don't, I want to be true to myself too. Like, I just don't want to So So I'll, I'll give you a tip on that because it took me a while to get over that hurdle, right? So first of all, we set it up now when we, when, when they get an email over from our team about the interview process, within there, it actually states that your episode may or may not air. That's right. Then the second That's thing, good. When I when we have to potentially have this conversation, I'm just very direct and blunt. Honestly, we don't think the interview was that great. We didn't want to put it on the audience. I don't think it's going to make you or us look good. And so, unfortunately, we're not going to air it. Am I going to get that email when I get home? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we'll just, we'll just, find out we'll just drag you out for a year. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, we're going to put it out there. Sooner. Exactly. <laughs> in a few weeks. Fuck that's it. What, yeah, that's what Adam. I would do. The, the <laughs> amateur in me would be do that for a while. I'd be like, no, it's coming out in like three or four weeks. Like, I'll check. And then they'll, re they'll like, yeah. we, we yeah, had, and then they'll do it again. When we were brand new, we had somebody say they lost our file. Like, so we were, we were on a podcast and <laughs> for a long time. We had a chip on our shoulder about that because it was it bothered us that we we did this kind of cross promo. Oh, like, yes, yes. Yeah, another fitness podcast. We were at that time, we were the small fitness podcast and, you know, we did this cross thing. Well, we aired theirs and then they, oh, we couldn't find, we lost the yeah. file. It and magically anyway. disappeared. Did you guys surpass them? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Which podcast was it? Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I want to call it. on your off, show. Off air, I'll tell okay, you. Okay, you'll yeah. tell yeah. me. Yeah, off air, I'll tell Why you. Why don't it. you guys have a girl to like kind of Balance. I kind of just I, like I, I don't. I wish was, Sal. I wish Sal was a girl. Yeah, yeah. me too. If I, know. I, if I could, <laughs> this is just how it happened. I'd be you know, hot like, as I mean, everybody asked us that. You the, would be hot the, as hell. The, yeah. tru the truth is, if we if uh, and because we get asked that question. I actually hate that question. By the way, I get very annoyed when someone oh, asks that question. Then I'll just now shift. For sure. <laughs> no, yes, there we go. Well, no, and let me tell you why I do is because. Uh, the, the decision to have Sal and Justin uh, as my partners had nothing to do with their sex. Um, and if if I had a female version of one of them, I would actually much rather them be that. We'd, do more, we'd be more successful because yeah. someone would be like, right. oh, there's a girl in there. And it's, so it's just it's that fit with the current culture. Yeah. Yeah. Like everything I, would be great. It's just we're not picking people to talk to based off of immutable characteristics. Right, or like gender. You yeah, know who does a really care. good job is Smart List. Have you guys ever heard that part no, podcast? No, no, no. You have, because it's the sim, they have three people. It's Jason, It's called Smart List with Jason Bateman, Will, um, uh, uh, Sean Hayes, and Will, Arnett? what's his name? No. Will Arnett. Is it? Yeah, Will yeah. Arnett. Boom. Yeah, and yeah. they are freaking hilarious together. Yeah. And I listened to it, not because, I could care less who the guest is, but they're, 
banter and they're like all they do is like rip on each other and it's mm-hmm. hilarious That's, this is what, what this is do. what connected the three of yes. us like we just we did not sit in a room and go we should all podcast it. we sat in a room and there was this unbelievable the conversation was so dynamic that katrina my wife who was my girlfriend at the time was in the kitchen was so enthralled by this she went over to the ipad and recorded the two hours of us talking in the living room because she was so into the conversation that was the first time we met the first time we really? met, yes, yeah. the very first time we all met, there was just this dynamic chemistry of the the three of us all just having conversation, talking shit to each other, picking on each other. Like that was our personalities. And like I said, if I'd rather one of them be a girl, but they weren't, and that's how it, it all played out. Right. And I would, and and at, because of my integrity and their integrity, we would never go seek out putting a girl on the show just, just to put a girl, girl. just right. because no, we no, know no. that there's a lot of people that ask that. And and I and I know that we would appease a certain percentage of the population just to say like, oh, and here's our fourth host, Jen, you know, just because she's a girl. Well, thank you. I'd love to be your fourth <laughs> you know host. Saying, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like yeah. if we did that just to appease the people that think we need to be, you know, uh, sexually balanced, uh, I just, I, that wouldn't sit well with me. I No, I told, and, I, and I, I appreciate the integrity. I guess because you would think, not always, I would think just in terms of like a girl's perspective, not in terms of the banter back and forth. Oh, there it is. But it's more because of the, you know, what is you, like when you guys do such great conversations, having some, maybe have like a female perspective. I mean, sure. I, I well, don't here's, know. Well, here's the reason. That's why we bring him on the show. But here's also. I'm hinting that maybe I want it. Don't yeah. you guys can't uh, take a hint? Yeah, She's yeah. trying to set us up. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Well, that's, take a hint. That's you're, you're, closing. He's you're, so like, you know, Oh God! You're like oh, it's it's been a it's actually been a, a we probably get hit with that question. I don't know, yeah. maybe yeah, once a month still. That oh, someone, that often? Yeah, yeah. It yeah. comes it comes oh, a lot. Wow. It came a lot at the very at the very beginning. And here's the thing, uh, you know, our conversation, especially around fitness, seventy five percent of my clientele for two decades was women. Yeah, I'm better at talking to women about fitness than I am men. I have more practice, more of an expertise in that. I've had to go back and read and troubleshoot all the things about the female body that I can't say I can share yeah. right, and right, learn right. about it myself and then learn how to communicate it to them and then also learn to have empathy and understanding when I'm not exactly. a female. Oh, so yeah. I've learned we've all learned that skill for two decades yeah. of training real people. So it's not much different yeah. on here and, communicating. And the it. truth yeah. is, different perspectives are always great. Whether it's a man, another guy, or a woman or whatever. Different perspectives are always great, but they have to bring value and they have to be able to communicate effectively and do a good job. And then I don't care, man, woman, you know, they don't identify as either. I don't care. Those are the criteria that I would, that we would look for. But, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but here's a deal. Like we've already built our dynamic with us. I don't think we'd ever add another person. We're not into open relationships. We're very I mean, I can commit it to each other. You know, really? Wow. You know, <laughs> you're a tripod. it before? Yeah. Just knock it. Into <laughs> <laughs> you know, I do think that, I mean, the way that we, uh, we started to build this and the way we continue to scale it is with the intent of being able to remove ourselves. So I, I don't, I would not be surprised if one day that one of us is not sitting in this chair and that we find in a, a female personality that we're like, oh my God, Adam, Jen is like the female version of you and you're trying to scale out of that position. Let's see if we can pay her enough money to be on the show. I 100% could see that happening. But that's what would make that decision is that you and I are so alike and that you're now filling my chair. Right, that makes sense has to nothing me. to do with your sex. It's that your personality probably, and there's like, we we know a guy who's like, kind of like Sal. We know a guy that's like Justin. Really? So, yeah, yeah. Well, they're like not. doppelgangers? They're just, no, no, no. Well, no, no. Like personality wise. Personality yeah. wise and strengths that they bring to the business because that's the other part that's very important. Everybody in here has a, a, a very important role to this company. What's your role, Justin? Just looking just handsome. being awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's real easy. Yeah. yeah. He's definitely- I, I calm them it. down because yes. they talk a lot and I'm trying to like, uh, sometimes we'll we'll get really heavy in, in in certain content and I think that it really, it's just my own, like I, I, I've, I've gone through school and I get bored and so I like to interject and make sure like we're still having fun. And yeah. so half of that is like, totally. you know, let's keep having a good time about this. This is getting too heavy or this is getting too serious with, you know, political stuff in the beginning or or whatever but like for me it's it's about you know being able to educate but have a good time doing it well that's, so that's your really where that's I'm your at. role yeah. that's his role in the show but behind the scenes you got to understand yeah, that a lot of other stuff. justin is more of an integrator than than sal and i so justin does a lot of technical stuff when you, all of our videos all of our programs that have been written and stuff like that he heads all that up oh so wow all the tech and the, him and doug 
are way more organized and Sal and I are a mess. Sal and I are the sticky notes. Got our, we need we both need assistance to remind us what to do today like we're a mess. You're like that too, Sal? Oh my god. He's worse than me. Yeah, you tell tell me what to do and I'll do it good, but I don't know what yeah. I'm supposed to do yet. Really? Absolutely. Cuz yeah. you seem like the academic. I definitely uh I like to read, I like to recite, um I like to talk about those kinds of things. But organization is not my forte at yeah. all. No, definitely not. I'll, I'll show up and I'll make it happen, but I'd much rather know, you know, five minutes before, Sal, this is what you're supposed to do. Today, here's what's going to happen here. Done. I'm, I'm on point, but I'm not organized. That's how yeah. we get... So Justin and I were connected 15 years ago, and what he was my... Uh, first, I hired him as a trainer, then he became my right-hand man, my assistant. What attracted to me to his his business skills was he was the opposite of me. All of all of my weaknesses were his strengths, yeah. And so we were as a team, we were incredible. Doug and Doug and Sal, same thing. Sal found Doug because Doug was the organized integrator, and they built a relationship before my mom. That's how this all came together. Was, and that's why we all hit it off so well. Is Sal and I have a lot in common. Our strengths are similar. Our weaknesses are similar. We've also met partners that our our weaknesses are their strengths. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it worked so beautifully when we all got together. That's so interesting. And so I'm very that's why I'm very similar to you, Sal, and to you, Adam. Yeah, yeah. We all have the same totally. strength set. That's and you need a Justin and Doug. I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you don't have a show. Justin exactly. or a Doug? Yeah. <laughs> I have someone who is like a Justin or Doug, but it's not as full time as I need. And it's funny because it's like an Achilles heel of mine. So when you were talking about that, that's really what um that's really what kind of slows me down, to be honest, and makes you much more, much less efficient. So if you, like I said, if you, if you're able to like take, you know, know your your strengths and and find and supplement those weaknesses, oh, yeah. it skyrockets your success and your ability oh, to, to we, thrive. We would not be able if Sal and I were by ourselves. This business would look completely different. But it wouldn't be a business. It would, <laughs> Justin and Doug, we we rely heavily on to integrate. Uh, everything. Yeah. We don't, uh, we absolutely are, are terrible at that. Uh, but we recognize, we all recognize that early and we were, I'm very comfortable with admitting my, my weaknesses. And, and I know that Justin's that strength and Doug is that for Sal and that's why it works so well. So yeah, on the show, people get to know our personalities and they just, assume, like you mentioned before we got on the podcast, you know, Sal wrote the book, so he must be the one who runs all this shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. People assume no. a lot of shit, but have no idea. No, no idea. Yeah. What you hear when we talk is just our personalities. And I'll, uh, here's another thing, like yep. J Justin is definitely an X factor because Adam and I are very polarizing. Very strong opinions, very polarizing. You either love us or you hate us. Without Which Justin, is great for rating. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, without Justin, it would. I know we would have. We'd be much more polarized, and it would be much more serious at times, and much more not as entertaining and 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 fun. And Justin brings that. Now, this, by the way, this wasn't like planned. We just met yeah, and happened yeah, to work. Yeah. You know, it just happened. So this talking. is all hindsight, right? And that's all, but that's when the best things happen, right? When it's kind of, it was, there was like such an organic thing that happened totally. naturally and it grew in itself. And I think that that, again, like that authenticity is pro, is the reason for your success. Most people, like we just mentioned, don't have that type of ability. They're they're fearful. There's they're watered down. They have all of those things. And you guys have a beautiful balance and your banter is like Great. It's like the smart list, but for the in the health and fitness. Yeah, but space. It, you know, it's also like I think it's people make a mistake trying to force uh, a square peg into a round hole. I remember yeah. when you and I did the video, uh, the cooking with Jen. I think Co it was called. Cohen, well, yeah. Yes, with, yeah, with you. And they had a script, oh, and they God. wanted, and and she was like, Jen was like, "Can we just go? Like, I know what we need to do. Let's just go." And yeah. it, and it, why? Because they and I, and look, we had a great time. We did great. I think. But I, I was seeing I'm what they were doing. So. I was seeing what they were doing, and I felt like telling <laughs> them, "Listen, you're making you're gonna, you're going to make her not as good by continuing to push. Her. Let her do her thing, and I guarantee it'll be much better." Oh, 100 percent. The second that someone puts restrictions on you or me or whatever, that's when things become like a total mess, right? Or like awkward. Yeah, like okay, here's the product. You know, you, you need to say, "Here's what you're going to make. Now have fun." It's going to be way better because that's who you are. Yeah, yeah. But but exactly. But knowing what that strength is, a lot of people. There's a lot of people who need to have regimented yeah. scripts. Yes, and which need is to fine. know exactly what mm -hmm. they have to say and da da da. And mm -hmm. they work better in that environment. But this all comes right back down to self awareness, knowing who you are, knowing what you're, what when you thrive, when you when you do well, when you do really shitty, and like 
kind of working within those confines is how you become like, uh, that's how you thrive. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Thank right? you. You're always so fun to talk to. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. gosh. Yeah. Are, are we done? Yeah. yeah, I, mean, yeah so. I mean, if we don't, we're going to talk you right onto yeah, your plane. I'm hungry. Oh, <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. Okay. I, well, I am starving, by the no, way. No, this has too. been a blast. I appreciate you coming on, yeah. Tim. I'm I appreciate so you happy to be here. And we'll yeah. make you a regular. Yeah. I do like uh, I do like having you come down. So we'll make you a regular to come down here oh, and hang out so with nice us. That's so nice of you. I just like, I like, I just really like the, like, like you guys. Oh, cool. I feel like this is very, I just feel that you guys are very like comfort like I feel like I've known you guys for a very long time yeah. even though I kind of have but I haven't spoken to you that much but it's very uh, familiar you feel thank familiar you. To thank me. you I appreciate that thank <laughs> no, you very much no you're thanks welcome thanks for coming on yeah, yeah. except you Justin it's good. <laughs> you get to I know. feel the same yeah, we'll have lunch <laughs> we'll get to know. Yeah. That's I'm familiar. teasing you I know I am too alright yeah. look if you like our content uh, you gotta head over to mindpumpfree.com we got so much free stuff it's incredible so go check that out you can also find all of us on Instagram Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Jen, what's your Instagram handle? The real Jen Cohen. There you go. Find her. She's awesome, Not too. the fake one. Yeah. <laughs> In the long term, you get all of your lows. Low energy, low mood, brain fog, or low cognitive ability. And the reason is that it's chronic. And the reason we can say... Yes, in the short term and then eventually long term as well, you've got skin rashes, you've got headaches, you've got allergies, you've got asthma, you've got low mood, you have autoimmune, bloating, gas, 